in power. That's the world we're living in. That's how insane this government is. That's why I call it. Do I have to say the title? I'm not going to say it. You know already. You know the title. I'm not even going to repeat it. Why do I have to tell you? This is your idea of a rational government. These are psychotic university lunatics who couldn't even get a job teaching. The last refuge of the liberal, by the way, is the, is the government. The last refuge of the incompetent liberal is not patriotism. It's in Obama's administration. These people are not even employable in universities. That's how stupid they are. They're below the level of MSNBC. So they wind up working for Obama. B.O.B., Mark, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Jacksonville's calling. What's on your mind? Hey, Mike, I wanted to tell you, I went to uh, Books a Million yesterday, and on the front aisles, there was Glenn Beck, Rush Flimball, and everybody but yours. So I asked the clerk, where is Government Zero by Michael Savage? And he walked me to the back of the store and handed me a copy, and I looked at him and I said, why isn't this in the front of the store with the Glenn Beck and the Rush Limbaugh books? And he looked at me and said, well, we have the best sellers in the back, too. Yeah, well, look, well, let me explain something. I wear it as a badge of honor. I am the most feared member of the... Glenn Beck is a clown. Glenn Beck's not relevant anymore. We all know that. The only threat to this liberal juggernaut is Michael Savage. So wear it with pride, folks. When you find Government Zero buried in the back of the store, understand they're burying it for a reason. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287-SAVAGE. Well, that was his goal. He hated the country that made him president, since he hates himself so much. It's a peculiar twist of narcissism, which I've studied recently. You may think that narcissists are in love with themselves, but they actually hate themselves. They fear that they're worthless. And so what they do is they have a an inverted sense of self-worth. And then they destroy everything around them that doesn't confirm that they're so wonderful. That's why he hates America. It's a reflection of his own insecurities. You know, I don't know whether we survive this guy. we got so much time left. But, you know, you don't want to hear it. He's a wonderful man with such a nice family. By the way, speaking of the president's family, something occurred to me last night in bed. Sometimes I think at dawn more clearly than ever. I know that from when I was younger, writers would write that they get their clearest thoughts upon awakening when you're in that semi-dream state. You just stay in bed an extra five minutes in the morning and just let your mind sort through the dreams subconscious as you come into consciousness and your thoughts will be clear before everything goes on before the computers go on etc two things occurred to me one uh we were told we were going to have a deluge here in the bay area san francisco on wednesday oh for a week people are running out of buying sandbags rain big rainstorm coming drought is going to end for one day then it's going to be nice on thursday and friday Everyone bought sandbags. They were they were getting ready for a flood. It didn't even dribble. Now, the same idiots who told us that it was going to rain heavily yesterday tell us the world's coming to an end unless man eliminates his industrial might and starts uh, riding in a rickshaw. That's number two. So what do they know? They know nothing. Nothing. They're sheeple. And then I thought about Michelle Obama. Remember how she used to jet around the world? at your expense. Remember how arrogant she was with her trips with her daughter and her mother? Everywhere you turned, she was on another junket around the world. Have you noticed you haven't seen or heard from Michelle Obama in the last few months? And do you know concurrently who you haven't also seen nor heard in the last several months? None other than the inimitable, wonderful, Nobel Prize winning climatologist, Al Sharpton. Not only did they throw him off MSNBC when they didn't need him anymore, uh, they pushed him away from the public sphere and told him to dummy up and keep his mouth shut. They've disappeared, Michelle Obama and him. Why? Because it's bad for the Democrats to be seen uh, in the, in those lights. Is that simple? I'm, that's what I say. I mean, I'm just observing. That's all. I'm just observing. That's all. Just saying. Just saying. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two is phone number. I mean, that's not a revelation. I'm not looking for a Nobel Prize or a Pulitzer. I don't need that. No need it at all. What would you like to talk about? 
I could ask you to give me the clown store. Play the clown music again. I'm running out of uh, interest in all of these new stores. My mind's somewhere else. Okay, turn it off. I don't even like the clown music. Play some Beethoven. Let's see if classical music lifts my, my brain up. I think I'm burned out from the book. I think the strain is too much for me to talk about it anymore. No, I'm just thinking out loud, you know, just saying. Just saying. This is one of the great strains in the history of a man's life is to think of a book, write a book, edit a book, have the book published, and then get on the radio and talk about the book and do television for the book. It's very hard to do, and I don't think I want to do it anymore. I really don't think I want to do it anymore. I think the rest is up to you. If you want the message of government zero to get out there, of no borders, no language, no culture, it's interesting. As I said to you, I went on Larry King this morning. Yeah, I think his show is small on RT, but the guy is amazing. He's in a, He asked me my age, and I told him, he said, I've got eight ears on you. The guy's in such shape. Must be the garlic. I don't know. Or all the wives, something. Maybe the garlic and the wives together is the, uh, the, the secret to, to longevity. But nevertheless, he is a lifetime liberal. Brooklyn Jewish guy. We know he's a liberal all the way back. But not nasty in his questions. Just intelligent and probing. And it was amazing. He says, all right, Michael Samet, you wrote Gunman Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> I said, well, Larry, I had to explain that every nation is defined by its borders and that look what's happening in Europe as a result of the idiots who wanted an open borders policy. Even they're cracking down. So what do you expect to do? What do you want to be done? I said, put the military on the border with Mexico. So he didn't follow up with attacking me and s spritzing me. He's not Bernie Sanders. He didn't give me a, a juicy spritz through the screen. The next question was about language. What do you mean language? There's so many different kind of people here. What are you afraid of? He said, you're afraid of the language Spanish? I said, no, I speak Spanish. I studied it for seven years. He said, well, when you were a kid, uh, didn't they speak many languages? I said, yeah, but they all spoke English. The, the official language was English in all government publications. You couldn't vote if you couldn't read English, Larry. I said, in San Francisco, they have the ballot in, I don't know, eight, ten languages, so they get illegal aliens to elect these corrupt cronies. Dianne Feinstein, Nancy Pelosi, Barbara Boxer, Governor Brown. How do you think they get elected? They don't care about the taxpayer. They care about the illegal alien keeping them in, in their corrupt power structure. I said it nicely. But that's what's going on. I said, yeah, English only, Larry. He said, well, what are you afraid of? You afraid of Spanish? I said, no, I like the language. So he says, well, you know, this is going to be the, the biggest population in California soon. Shouldn't you learn Spanish? And shouldn't we speak Spanish? I said, no, they should learn English. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. You don't go to Rome and tell Rome, the Romans in those days to learn, uh, to learn uh, Hungarian or whatever. There was no Hungary at the time. You can tell them to learn French, for example, or German. No, you told those who are coming to Rome for the benefits of Rome to learn Italian. You're coming to my country because you love the welfare and you love the clean air and you love the police and you love the safety. Learn the language. Don't tell me to speak your tongue. I read I read the literature in Spanish. I studied it for seven years. I never liked it particularly. I don't get along with the Spanish language. It's a tough language for me. I like French better. Just a personal thing. I like French literature better. I mean, how many times can you read Cervantes or uh, with the windmill job? Aside from that, it's all communist literature. They teach in Spanish anyway. You know, but anyway, let's put that aside. Okay, then he says culture. What's culture, Savage? What do you mean by culture? What do you mean there's no culture in America? I had to explain to him the Bill of Rights, freedom of speech, going back to English common law, Magna Carta. I said, Larry, we have very little free speech left in this country. Take a look at what goes on on college campuses today. A Christian can't pray. They can't talk about conservative things without being attacked by the goons, the left-wing insecure rats, the goons. They have, they've, they've, they've eliminated free speech on the college campuses, Larry. I don't think many of these people in the media even know what they've done to this country. That's really what I'm trying to say to you. And it's an awakening that has to happen. Most of these guys are nice people. By the way, not, now the CNBC people were not nice. John Hardhead is an evil man. The, the girl, I don't know her name, is Quick. Where'd she get that name from? But whatever. She was quick to put down everyone on the stage. Uh, as I said, La Larry, what's his name? Kramer? What's his name? The guy. Kramer? Jeff Kramer? What's his name? Jim Kramer. I don't know. Maybe it was Mickey Rooney's old stash. He ingested something before the show. 
Must have been something left over in Mickey Rooney's uh, horror house that he touched when he walked in and accidentally touched the count of the four mica. But the man was so beyond it's crazy, screaming, drug company. I don't know what he was doing. Jumping up and down like a mad jack-o'-lantern. All right, what do you want to talk about? Yesterday, today, tomorrow? 855-407-282. WVLK Radio. Jody, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, the late last night, man, you know, what a joke. Uh, the mainstream media is, they are so full of themselves, and they are so, so biased. You know, I'm a born-again Christian, and uh, I just don't understand why they can't tell the truth. Where has the truth went? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't have an answer to that. All I can say to you is that the media is is responsible for having destroyed the American mind. The media is the problem. It's not the politicians. Never forget who destroyed America. It's the media that destroyed America. Because if there was a better media, we wouldn't have had clowns like this become president. If there was a better media, people like Pelosi, Feinstein, and Boxer would have been thrown out of office 20 years ago or would never have been elected to begin with. But because they're on the same page, because they're owned lock, stock, and barrel, that's how people of that low caliber can stay in power for so long. I'm sending you a free copy of Government Zero. Phone number 855-407-282. Any topic is fair game, including the news. I want to do the news. And I have the, the leftover piece from the Newsmax interview that was good the other day. I have a couple of other little pieces. Let's start the Newsmax interview for a few minutes, and let's see if I like it. If I don't, I'll turn it right off. Let's hear it. You are a borders culture, uh, borders language culture guy. So to see the uh, title of the book, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture, uh, right away, I know it's not too optimistic a, a scenario you're painting. Well, here's the thing. It's not just another book. It has solutions. It has the ammunition people need to convert a husband, a wife, a neighbor, a child who's been brainwashed in the government schools. They don't really know what's happening to this country. The machine is so powerful, Steve, as you well know. People have no idea. Remember the story came out about two weeks ago that the EPA spent $60 million a year on public relations? Yeah. External and internal. Okay, if, the, if a single department of Barack Hussein Obama spends $60 million to put out propaganda... What are they spending to make Barry look like a great patriotic commander in chief? A yep. billion dollars a year? Two hundred million dollars a year? Take a look at the real story. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, but I don't want to go into Obama bashing. He bashes himself every time he speaks if you really listen to what he's doing. No, but you present a 40, as you mentioned, there are solutions, a 40-point plan to take this country back to the original intent and the ways the founders intended us to be. I don't know about the founders. You know, this is another misnomer, and I, I don't want to split hairs here. Everyone keeps going back to the founders, and there's a little discomfort for me there for one reason. The principles were fantastic, but I think we all have to agree it was a little different, the country. Very homogeneous, predominantly white people, Native Americans who were disenfranchised, didn't vote. Slaves who were here didn't vote, right? Landholders, mainly white men, God bless them, they built the nation. And a small land area, small population. The rules are great if you are a religious person who believes in the Bible, follows the Bible, and I mean the Ten Commandments. I don't mean putting women in burqas and performing sexual mutilations on your young girls and blowing things up. I'm talking about the religion of peace called Christianity. That's one story. But now we're living in a pluralistic world, a multicultural world, for better or for worse. That's what we live in. But that's nothing new. Steve, I grew up in New York. I'm an immigrant son. I walked around the Lower East Side of New York. I walked through Chinatown. There were no signs in English. It was all in, in Chinese, right? In the Jewish area, it was all in, in, in Yiddish. In the Italian area, the signs were still in Italian. It didn't bother me. I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm not looking to go back to the horse and buggy or the musket. But we're not talking about that. When my grandfather came here, he taught me to be an American, learn English, love the country. It's the greatest place on earth. Unfortunately, we all know that's not what's happening. Now, this is old news. Everyone's heard this before. But I lay out in Government Zero, case by case, chapter by chapter, precisely what the decimation is, what Barry from Honolulu will likely do unless he is stopped. And I mean stopped legally. Don't get me wrong. I've called for the methods, and the first thing is exposure. It's knowledge. 
each of the past two elections, especially the last one, I said it's the most important election of my lifetime and possibly in the country's history. Uh, and now, I guess, I feel that this one is even more important than the last one and the one before it. But this one really, like you said, I, if Hillary wins, if a Democrat wins, 